But the thing is, the Bible has been changed over time. Like the Bible, the Torah, they both ha they both have been changed. Can you prove that? Historically, it's known that the Bible no, can has you been prove changed. It? No, I, I can't prove it. Why do you need the middleman to get to God? Why do you need Christ to be able to get to God? Why can't you? So, for example, in Islam, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jesus is a prophet, right? So he's not he's not our connection to God. So as Prophet Muhammad, he's a prophet. He's just a prophet. Yeah. He's like we love him dearly and everything, but yeah. uh, in the end, he's not a God. We we when we reach out to God, we reach out to God Himself, not to His prophets. To His or for us, we don't uh, we don't believe God ha God has a son. So mm -hmm. in your perspective, we don't we wouldn't reach out to God through His son, basically. You get what I mean? Yeah. So, it's, so in, in Islam, you're praying, you're asking for, uh, uh, when you start praying, you're, you're, you're firstly saying how grateful, grateful you are mm -hmm. for all the uh, blessings that you have. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you praise God, and then you ask for his, uh, for his gui uh, guidance, basically, mm -hmm. uh, to be righteous. So you're, you're reaching out to God himself. Yep. Right, so it's like, why would you need a middleman when you could reach out to God Himself? Why would why would you need someone to help you get over to heaven when you could get to God Himself and pray for God can Himself? I, can I answer that? That's yeah, a good question. So, since the beginning, since the time of Musa mm -hmm. and the Torah, yeah, the only way that God ever forgave sins was through the shedding of blood. Okay, through a sacrifice. So in the times of Moses, God commanded the Israelites mm -hmm. through the priests to kill a lamb and the shedding of an innocent lamb will atone their sins because animals are not accountable to God's law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, when they die, they're not going to be judged. Yeah, of course. Their blood is pure. Yeah. But there are certain regulations, specific ways to do it, where to do it, how to do it. The shedding of an animal's blood will atone or forgive their sins at that time. God said that's the method and that, that that's a picture of the ultimate sacrifice. Okay, I'm talking about the times of Moses. Yeah. And they did that by faith, looking forward to the ultimate, the final sacrifice. What's the final sacrifice? The Messiah. Okay. So there's prophecies in the Old Testament, one being Isaiah 53. I don't know if you've read uh, Isaiah 53. Uh, I haven't read the Bible to be honest. Uh, so like I have uh, basic information. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You that's could good. go ahead and continue. In Isaiah 53, you'll see a picture of the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I'll encourage you to go home and read Isaiah 53. When Christ came, he fulfilled those prophecies. Yeah. He died on the cross as the final sacrifice, as the Lamb of God. There has to be shedding of blood. That's the way God has made it and that's his method. There has to be a, a sacrifice. Yeah. You can't just say, I'm sorry and I'll never do it again. That won't even work in the court of law. Let's say you face a judge one day. Are, are you You've speaking from a biblical point of view? Now I'm transitioning to earthly uh, perspective, okay? Yeah. If you commit a crime and you're facing a judge, yeah. and you say, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again, the judge will say, you better be sorry, and you better not do it again. Yeah. But your sin, your crime, still has to be punished. So God is a just God, and He punishes sin. I know you, how you doing? Uh, I forget your name. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so, there has to be a punishment for sin. The Bible yeah. says, it, it, the soul that sins shall die. Yeah. Does that make sense? If Look, look, the Bible says the wages yeah. of sin is death. I don't know about your perspective, your belief. I'm explaining what God says in the Bible. He yeah, says, yeah, of course, of course. the wages of sin is death. Yeah. So when you, when you sin, you're just building up the worst consequence, which is death. Mm -hmm. And then there's judgment, because God is a moral God. He's a just God. He's going to judge you for your sins. Yeah. You can't just say, God, I'm sorry. You better be sorry. Yeah. But you're going to bear your punishment. But in God's mercy, He sent someone as a substitute for you. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, okay. He sent the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Christ is the one. He's the anointed one. Mm -hmm. The one who the Old Testament, if you read the Old Testament, I'm just sharing with you some knowledge. Yeah, okay? yeah, of course. It describes the Messiah as everlasting. Yeah. Did you catch that? Uh, I haven't read the Old no, Testament. No, did you hear what I just said? Everlasting, yeah. What does everlasting mean? That, like, he, he doesn't die, right? Everlasting means he had no beginning 
and he doesn't have an end. Yeah. Who to you has no beginning and has no end? It's just God that has Amen. no beginning. Amen. So yeah. the Bible in Micah, the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, mm -hmm. it says the one who's going to come from Bethlehem, who is Jesus, yeah. he's talking about the Messiah, is from everlasting. Yeah. So the Messiah has to be God. If you read Isaiah, I know I'm shooting too much at you. No, no, I understand everything you're saying. But I'm just trying to give you some knowledge. Yeah, Let yeah. me just give you this one. In, yeah. in Isaiah chapter 9, it says the Son, who is the Messiah, is called El Gibor, the mighty God. Mm -hmm. So the Messiah is not just a prophet. He's not just a man. The Messiah, biblically, when you read the Bible, he's, he's God. But the thing is, the Bible has been changed over time. Like the Bible, the Torah, they both, ha they both have been changed. Can you prove really? that? Historically, it's known that the Bible no, can has you been prove changed. It? No, uh, I can't prove it. So if, it, if, if, if it's been changed, then it lost a lot of its credibility. And the other thing about it is that uh, it's not written from the perspective of Jesus, right? It's his, uh, like, uh, what do you call them? Paul and... Uh, his close friends are the ones that, his close companions are the ones that, the ones that wrote it, right? They basically wrote about the life of Jesus. So if it's not even from Jesus' perspective, and it's not, uh, and it has been changed, then it's lost a lot of its credibility, which, which is, which is uh, the complete opposite of the Quran. Okay. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Basically, if it's, if it's, uh, and the Torah as, the Torah as well, mm -hmm. uh, it's been changed over time. So, okay. can you prove that? I can't prove it, but okay. it's so a historical fact. So this is something, fact. hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Before you say it's a historical fact. Like, I, I don't have the proof, but I'm sure there is a lot of proof. I don't okay. have the proof on me right now, but I'm sure okay. if you look so it up, we're going to find Let it. me answer that in two ways. Yeah. As a Muslim, you should not be saying that according to the Quran. That's a lie. Why? Why is it? Because the Quran confirms the Bible. And I can show you surahs. It, but it's been changed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I can show you many places in the Quran that states that the Bible in its entirety the Torah, the Anjil, certain books in the Old Testament mm -hmm. are Allah's words and they will never be changed. Secondly, if you actually look into the historicity of the Bible, the way it was transmitted, compiled, let's talk about the New Testament, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know if you know this. We have over 5,500 manuscripts and portions of manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. We have approximately 10,000 Latin manuscripts of the New Testament that go way, way early to the first few centuries yeah then there's uh, translations of uh, the Coptic Arabic Hebrew Syriac these are manuscripts copies of the original Greek New Testament yeah are you following what I'm yeah, saying yeah I'm following okay and we can trace these back to the second century third century very early on mm -hmm. and all these manuscripts are the same as the original Greek New Testament. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have copies of the Greek. Okay, and our Bible actually matches what the Greek says. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I'm following. Yeah. Okay, so now your problem is um, you're saying it's been changed. So yeah. when was it changed? Was it before the time of Muhammad? Was it during the time of Muhammad or was it after the time of Muhammad? No, it was before the time of Muhammad. If it was before the time of Muhammad, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense because there were so many manuscripts already established mm -hmm. in so many different languages, in so many different places, yeah. different con countries, cities, and continents. Yeah. Someone had to have been able to go to all those places, gather and collect all those manuscripts in Greek, Coptic, Arabic, Greek hold on, is. Syriac. Yeah. Latin, get it all, know those languages, corrupt them, change them, put them all back in its original places, yeah. then I would say, you know what, you're right, you're correct, but it's been changed. You say it's all translated from the Greek version, right? Yes. That's what you said. Yes. What if the Greek version is what's been changed? What if the Greek version is what's been changed? And then, it's, since it's been changed, the translated versions, of course, are going to be changed. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Early on, eyewitnesses, the scribes and the followers of Christ, wrote down the events that happened. The Spirit of God inspired the scriptures. Then they made copies and copies and copies yeah. from the originals. They took it very seriously. There's 99.5%, over 99% accuracy when it comes to the main doctrines and the main beliefs of the scriptures. Christianity. Mm -hmm. 
Are you following what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, okay. yeah. Now, when it comes to the Quran, the Quran confirms the whole Bible. True. Yeah. Okay, so you said a minute ago that the Bible was changed and corrupted before the time of Muhammad. Yeah. Muhammad came 7th century, okay? Yeah. So, 600 years after Christ's crucifixion and resurrection, Muhammad came. Mm -hmm. If the Bible was corrupted before the time of Muhammad, the Quran would not confirm the Bible. Well, no, so now you have to change Quran, your answer. Was no, it changed? No, no, it wasn't after? changed. The Quran, the, Quran, uh, the Quran confirms the Bible, but, but uh, it confirms that the, the original Bible is the Word of God, right? But not the, the originally the Bible was the Word of God, but it's been later on, later on changed. The Quran doesn't say When is later on? Sorry, when is later on? Uh, I could look it up, but... No, I, no, no, I, I, but uh, yeah. hear this logic, okay? Yeah, yeah. So... Well, let, let me just continue. Okay, right? go ahead. Yeah, so basically, if the Quran uh, confirms the Bible, but it doesn't say that the Bible is correct now. If the Bible is correct now, then we'd have contradictions between the Quran and the Bible. Then how, how would he tell us that the Bible is correct and the Quran is correct? Follow both. They both have different... They have different, uh, like... Uh, ideologies basically right mm -hmm. yeah so uh, the, what the Quran says is that the Bible and the Torah are the book of God or, are the books of God and and we believe in, the, in them as Muslims mm -hmm. what but we we don't believe that the current versions of them even at the time of the Prophet Muhammad are uh, are correct you get me okay. so uh, look I, I'm gonna ask you a question uh, I could tell that you've looked into Islam as well right of course I used to be a Muslim okay you used to be a Muslim yeah yeah so do you believe in prophet as uh, do you believe in Muhammad as prophet? No, I think he's a false prophet. Yeah, I think he's, a, I think he's a prophet of Islam, mm -hmm. uh, but he's not a true prophet of God. Well, before you that? go there, before you yeah. go into the prophet of, of Muhammad, in Surah 1064, I don't know if you want to write this down or if you want to just Surah? remember it. Surah Yunus, Surah yeah. 1064, Surah yeah. and in Surah 6, Ayah 114 to 115. Mm -hmm. And in Surah 18, Ayah 27, it says, no one can change the kalimat Allah. No one can change the words of Allah. True. Okay. Yeah. When you go to Surah 5, 46, it says, we gave them the Anjil and the Torah as a guidance, light, and confirmation. Mm -hmm. This is Allah speaking. Yeah. That He gave the Anjil and the Torah True. as a light, yeah. as a guidance, and as a confirmation. So nobody can change the words of Allah, and He True. gave the Anjil and the Torah. So those two are the words of Allah. True. 100%, okay. Okay. So hold on. Let me yeah. finish. In Surah Four, Surah Al Nisa, verse one sixty three to one sixty four, mm -hmm. it says Allah inspired the books of Nuh, Ibrahim, Ishmael, Ishaq, Yaqub, Al Asfat, the sons of Jacob, Isa, Ayub, Yunus, Harun, Suleiman, Daud, and it goes on. Yeah. That he's inspired all these books. So yeah. practically most of the Old Testament. Yeah. Okay. But now here you are saying that the the Anjil and the Torah, you mentioned the Torah as well, has been changed. Yeah. So but my the, question to you is how come well, how look, come there's no the, for the Torah it's uh, they didn't believe in Jesus, right? No no hold on hold on. Hold on. Yeah. If these books that the Quran claims are Allah's words, yeah. how come you're telling me they've been changed when uh, when Allah says in multiple places in the Quran yeah. that His words cannot be changed. Well, but uh, you took only the verse in which He says, uh, the, in which He says that. So you took verses in different areas of the Quran mm -hmm. and you relate them, right? But uh, you took the verse in which He says, uh, uh, in which He says that the word of God is uh, will not be changed, correct? But if you would look at context, I'm just predicting, but if we both look at context, sure. I'm guessing it's talking about the Quran, it's not talking about the other books. So I just showed you, it says the Anjil, the Torah, are no, light. That's another verse, that's a, that's a different Are they the Kalimat Allah or no? They are Kalimat Allah, but they, they so are... So why do you make a differentiation? Why do you make a distinction between the Quran yeah. and the Anjil? Are they not all the words of Allah inspired by Allah? They are all the words of Allah, they are all inspired by Allah. And why do you make a distinction? We we're not making distinction, but how come those were changed? Some wicked yeah. men were able to change Allah's words yeah. there, but not here. Why? Why can Allah not preserve His kalimat, His words? Uh, he, of course, He can preserve His kalimat, but for the uh, He can preserve His words. But for the Quran, uh, He He gave um, He gave a promise that He's going to protect the Quran Himself. So, in, for the Injil and the Torah, where they, is the promise? 
uh, uh, verse? I could, I could look it up. The Bible says many times, Jesus yeah. himself said, he said, uh, heaven and earth will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Yeah. Throughout the Bible, it says God will preserve his words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His instructions, uh, his laws. I get you 100%. So, I, I, but here you if are. If the Bible's changed, if the Bible's changed, they surely didn't change the whole Bible, but they changed some ideologies of it. So if, if, the, if the Bible has been changed, of course, they didn't just scrap the whole book and write a different book. They changed parts of it, elements of it. So now it's, it's not... There are some elements that are correct, but it's not completely correct. So, so in as much as it matches the Quran, it's not been changed, but once it contradicts the Quran, then it's been changed. Well, the, uh, look that... So <laughs> whatever suits yeah. your Quran... Yeah, yeah. You pick and choose, basically. You no, play no, fast no, and loose. I, I'm not picking and choosing. Not you. You and every other Muslim. Uh, I'm not picking and choosing, no, either. So I, where the Bible says Jesus is God, Jesus died on the cross, and the Quran says, no, he's not God. He, don't say three. Don't say Trinity. Yeah. He never died on the cross. That's been changed. That's been changed in the Bible. Yeah, so you're well, picking and choosing based if, on... If you look into the Quran... Based on the Quran. But if you look into the Quran... You, you cannot disprove any single verse. If you look at even the... Do you know Surah Tariq? Do you know Surah Let's Tariq? Let's not change topics. One Wait, second, one no, second. no, no. That, that, well, let, let me get to my point. So, do you know Surah Tariq? Chapter uh, Tariq. So, it's, it basically says... Uh, I think it's... As-Sama'i wa Tariq wa ma adraka ma Tariq Najmun Thaqib. Right? So, what's... The meaning of Tariq in Arabic is the knocker. Okay, so it's saying that uh, the Tariq, which is a name of a star, and the uh, disguise, and uh, uh, which means like, and uh, what is a Tariq? It says uh, it's a, like a bright star, basically, or a glowing star. Okay. okay. So even that, if you look into, Nowadays, we, we now know that there are pulsary stars, for example. There's what, sorry? There are stars called pulsary stars, okay? Okay. Like, uh, scientifically, I'm not talking about the Quran. So, scientifically, we know that there are pulsary stars, and through NASA, you can find recordings of the sound of the stars. They call it pulsary stars because it sounds like a pulse. But if you also look, listen to it, it sounds like a knock. So, how would the Quran know that uh, uh, that a star would sound like a knock? And like there are some uh, a lot of historical facts. For example, the number of times the Earth is mentioned and the number of times uh, the water is mentioned. If you take this ratio, you will find the exact same ratio as water to land we have. If you uh, when he talks about the Earth, he doesn't say we jo he doesn't say we created the Earth. Okay. He says. We made it like the shape of an egg, which is like sphere. I need right? to stop you. You're jumping to a whole no, different well, topic. Well, hold thing, on, hold on, hold thing, on. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about the reliability yeah. and the authenticity of the Bible, yeah. both historically and according to the Quran. Now you're jumping into science but and the do stars. You, do hold you have on, any proof that historically? I, I did not interrupt correct? you. Hold on. Yeah. I just explained, I don't know, 15 minutes ago, the history of the compilation and the transmission of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't think you heard me. Uh, so, I, I completely heard you. But I don't think you understood. Because then, yeah. later on, you said it's been changed. I said to you that the Greek New Testament alone, mm -hmm. we have over 5,500 manuscripts and portions of manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. Yeah. That's the Gospels. That's the letters of Paul. Okay? Mm -hmm. The epistles. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot of manuscripts. We have 10,000, approximately 10,000 Latin manuscripts of the New Testament that these are early 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 manuscripts from dating from the second century and on okay but hold on hold yeah. on to say that they've been changed is nonsensical someone had to have went to all these different cities known those languages changed certain things without getting caught well, and then put those yeah. manuscripts back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't make any mean, sense. But it doesn't make any sense. Mean. I completely get what you mean. But even if you look it up, you're going to see that it's been changed over time by emperors, by leaders, by... Okay, now you have to show me evidence. Okay, you have to show me proof. I'm giving you historical proof that what you're saying makes no sense. Even according to the Quran, you shouldn't be saying that the Bible's been changed. Or partially been changed. Uh, one second. So, uh, I just... 
uh, typed has the Bible been changed, okay. right? So the Bible is the holy script, the holy scripture of the Christian religion, mm -hmm. uh, purport, uh, purporting to tell the history of the earth from its earliest creation uh, to the spread of Christianity in the first century. Mm -hmm. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament have undergone changes over the centuries, mm -hmm. including the. Uh, let me get. So, what what website is this you're reading? Yeah, it's the first website that popped up. Uh, we could look into other websites if you want. But. Okay, so you have a problem as a Muslim. Yeah. As a Muslim, your Quran says that the Bible has never been changed. No one can no, change the words of that. Allah. No one can change the words of Allah. Okay, if, stop, stop, stop. The context hold on, is hold on, the Quran. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Are the words of Allah only the Quran? No, it's the Bible and the Torah too, but... Uh, stop, stop, let's slow down, let's slow down, because well, we're talking me, too but, fast, but we're talking can, too fast. Of course, of course. Earlier you went on about science for like almost three minutes and yeah, I didn't yeah, interrupt. Yeah, but, but, uh, Is the Bible the words of Allah? The Bible? Yes. At the time it was. No, 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 no. Yeah. The words of Allah are eternal. The words of Allah They're, are eternal, but the, the difference is you're taking the verse in which it says uh, that Karimatullah will not be changed, mm -hmm. will never be changed. Mm -hmm. But it's if you if you look into the context, it will it would be talking about the Quran that it's Kalimatullah of the Quran. It's, it's talking about the Quran itself. It's not talking about uh, Kalimatullah uh, in the Bible or in the Torah. It's talking about Kalimatullah in the Quran will not be changed for the Torah and for the Injil, uh, for the Torah and the Injil. To be honest, I, I, I'm not sure how, how changed the Torah has been, but since they. Like sorry, uh, sorry. since stop, we both stop, don't stop, believe stop, stop. in since they don't believe in Christian uh, and the Jesus and we both believe in Jesus then we stop 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 yeah. I gotta interrupt yeah. I'll encourage you to you know go home mm -hmm. read the Gospels I was a Muslim too yeah 16 years ago a friend of mine gave me the New Testament he gave mm -hmm. me the New Testament yeah and I read the Gospel of Matthew and I began to understand who Christ is according to people who knew him mm -hmm. not according to Muhammad who came 600 years later never met Jesus couldn't even read or understand Greek or Hebrew because the New, New Testament was written in Greek. Greek was the common language. Yeah. Old Testament was written in Hebrew. Yeah. Muhammad didn't. He was illiterate. Yeah. He couldn't yeah. even read and write Arabic. Yeah. The disciples actually knew Christ, and they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not Angel Gabriel, mm -hmm. but the Spirit of God Himself. But what's well of necessary things that you must know. Yeah. Which is eternal life is only in Christ. But isn't that uh, some form of revelation? If you're getting the, if you're getting stuff from the Spirit of God Himself, like uh, if me as a Muslim, I'm getting stuff directly from God Himself. Doesn't that mean I'm a prophet? No, if I'm there, getting there's a difference. So the way Muhammad received revelation Through was angels. almost like instant, instantly, like any any time he could have received a revelation like this. Yeah. Right. That's not what happened with the disciples. They didn't receive revelation, you know, like this. Yeah. They saw Christ, they walked with him, they saw his character, they understood the things he said. They might have not understood certain things fully, but they, they followed him for three years. Yeah. They saw him crucified on the cross. And yeah. then three days later, Christ revealed himself in human form, physically. Mm -hmm. After he died, he resurrected and he showed himself to the disciples. And that's the faith that we believe in. That's our hope. Okay. If Christ just yeah. died and he was in the grave, there's no hope. Of course. We be where you are with a dead prophet. No way. Uh, Muhammad he, he's died. Not dead for us. Oh no. He died Mo and he's in the grave. Muhammad is not uh, is not God. He's not eternal. Muhammad's just a prophet. He's gonna die just like any of us. Okay. Just... So Jesus died and resurrected, and that's what makes him eternal. You just proved it. No, but Jesus is. Are that's, you saying if Muhammad saying... resurrected, he it would make him God? Is so, that what you're saying? For us, we believe that Jesus was brought back to no, the no, heavens. No, no. Yeah. If Muhammad resurrected from the grave, would that make him God? If he was re resurrected from the grave and he's still alive, um, if he's uh, look, he can be alive if it's f uh, out of God's permission and God's will. If Muhammad if not, had the power to yeah. rise again from the grave, it's not Muhammad that has the power. Okay, if that's so happen, that's the difference. Muhammad. Christ it's, said, "Christ said, I have the power to yeah. lay down my life, and I have the power to raise it up again." Jesus said that. Yeah. And he did. Why don't you look up yeah. scholars who know Hebrew and Greek? Mm -hmm. One guy I can think of is Daniel B. Wallace. Daniel B. Wallace. Mm -hmm. Another guy you can look up is James White. You can look up these guys and get actual accurate information of the compilation, the transmission, the reliability of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Don't just Google, 
you know, a random website, even if it's a no, hundred websites. I don't websites. disagree with you. You're 100% correct. If okay. I want to get uh, information about the Bible, I should get it from the people of the book, people who read the book, the scholars, the people who have studied it. That's 100% correct. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, why, like, why would the why would the whole internet agree on this thing if it's totally? I don't know. Modern? I don't know what website you read. I don't know if you just googled, has the Bible been changed? You know, yeah. not everyone's a follower of Christ. Not everyone's 100%. a God lover. The Bible says yeah. in Romans one, in the New Testament, Paul says, people are haters of God. Hundred yeah. percent. And Christ said, if they hate you, it's because they hate me. People hate God. So I don't know what website you're reading, but. Uh, like I said earlier, even as a Muslim, you shouldn't be saying the Bible's been changed. What if the Bible is actually the truth, and 600 years later, mm -hmm. one man comes along in a different continent, who doesn't understand what the gospel is, just hears certain things from Jews, from some, some from different Christians or Catholics, mm -hmm. and then completely contradicts the truth, which is the Bible. What if that's the case? What if the Bible is actually true? Yeah. And Muhammad got it wrong. And to go even further, that it's from shaitan. Yeah, okay. So Don't get offended. I'm just uh, I'm saying this is a possibility. It's, it's just a, we're just like... Yeah, yeah. this is a possibility. Because yeah. of course shaitan is a deceiver. Mm -hmm. He wants to deceive people. Yeah. He'll say, sure, you know, Allah inspired, you know, the NG of the Torah. Yeah. But this, this one point, which is the biggest point in the whole Bible, which is the fact that, which is Jesus is God and that he died on the cross, mm -hmm. that that's wrong. That's not true. Don't believe it. Yeah. Wouldn't shaitan do that? Uh, Would that be a possibility? Of course, if shaitan wants, okay. wants to do that, he could. But the, uh, what I'm saying is the credibility, about the, the credibility of the Quran doesn't just, the Quran isn't just, uh, it's not just, um, it's not orders. You get me? It's, it's not, not just. Sorry? It's not just like oh, this, do this or do that. Do that. It has a lot of. Uh, it, it has a lot of scientific facts. It has a lot of. Uh, it has a lot of evidence that, when you look into it, there is no way someone who's illiterate would, fi would find that all, all of that evidence and none of it can yeah. ha has ever been disproven. None of uh, it's. The Quran is not just. It, it doesn't give you just. It's not. Uh, it's not just. Orders. It's science. It has a lot of. Uh, science that uh, when you read it and when you mm -hmm. well, well, when you look into it with an open mind you're gonna find a lot of signs that are just gonna be mind-blowing can I you, reply so. to that yeah I, I would get into the whole science topic of the Quran with you mm -hmm. we can go there for the sake of time I can because we're gonna leave soon yeah um, we've been here a few hours yeah sharing yeah, yeah, the gospel yeah, yeah. but I will say the science is not gonna save your soul Course. Boasting in the science of the Quran is not going to save your soul. Yeah. His name is Hassan. He's a Muslim. We had a nice conversation. Um, yeah. Mainly about the Bible. Is it corrupt? Is it not? Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to close this conversation. It was nice talking, man. It was man. an honor talking to you. Yeah, you too. You too.